seeing now. So again, welcome. Thank you for being here. My name is Tina Wajardo, registered dietitian and health educator with Bronson Community Health. And our topic today is on the Mediterranean diet. But before we get started, we like to start all of our classes um, by providing you with some resources on um, how to find care or access some resources here at Bronson. Our first resource that I want to share with you today is our find a doctor or specialist feature on our Bronson Health website. This is a feature in which you can search for a specialist like an endocrinologist, a cardiologist, because we're talking about the Mediterranean diet and heart health. Whatever you might be looking for, you can search on the Find a Doctor feature, or if you don't use the website very often, you can always call a care advisor and they can help you uh, find the, the specialist you are looking for. If you are a, a patient here at Bronson and use our My Chart feature, which is the um, ability to access some of your medical records on the website or on the app. If you're ever having any issues with MyChart, need any assistance or questions answered, please feel free to reach out to our Bronson Health Answers Department. They are here to help you with those areas and they can be reached by phone or by email. If you need any assistance with billing or setting up a payment plan for a bill that you might owe, Bronson Patient Accounting is always available to assist you in that area. And in the last bullet point there, um, we have this uh, nice feature at Bronson um, called the Price Estimator Tool, and you can access that through MyChart. You do not have to have an active MyChart account in order to use it or you can reach out to the phone number listed there. And that price estimator will allow you to get essentially a quote for any service that maybe you have been referred for, right? Say you've got a referral for an x-ray and you just wanna kind of know what to expect for your out-of-pocket expenses after insurance. The estimator team there can help you get an understanding of what that service will look like for you and your expenses. So let's get started. Again, thank you all so much for being here. Our topic of conversation today is Mediterranean in the month of May, because May is Mediterranean Diet Month. So why not? And so today, our goals are that we are going to learn what the current evidence says that supports the Mediterranean style of eating. Second, we are going to discuss the basic overview of the Mediterranean style of eating. And then lastly, and most importantly, right, we're going to identify how we can use those comp components of the Mediterranean style of eating into our own meals and snacks so we can benefit from this style of eating. So Chris is going to start us off by um, uh, putting up a poll question for you guys. Uh, you'll see the poll question pop up on your screen. And the question that I'm going to have you answer is, are you currently following the Mediterranean diet? So you're going to see that poll question pop up on your screen. Okay, people are weighing in. We've got, yep, 3% so far. Uh, no, no, but have been considering is about 73% and sometimes about 24%. So the majority is saying no, but have been considering. Yes, exactly. Well, awesome. Thank you guys so much for being here. Then those for the, for those of you that have been considering, I hope you guys will learn something useful from today's conversation and kind of push you over the edge and including some more of those Mediterranean uh, tips in um, our meals and snacks. So we will move forward. So a lot of the research that I am going to be uh, presenting to you today comes from um, this particular study, um, the primary prevention of cardiovascular disease with a Mediterranean uh, diet. And this uh, study was really just you know, understanding the long-term effects of Mediterranean diet on a cardiovascular on cardiovascular disease. 
So a lot of the research is coming from this study in particular, um, but I've used a lot of other studies and there are many other studies available to um, understand the impact the Mediterranean diet has on many other um, chronic diseases like diabetes. Um, you know, there's even research on, you know, mental health. You know, with any study, we, you know, we start to study the Mediterranean diet on a certain aspect of life, uh, but it does tend to take quite a bit of time and research to, uh, you know, prove um, so to speak, the impact. So uh, there is a lot of research out there, uh, but maybe not 100% proven that the Mediterranean diet can impact their certain area. So what I'm focusing on today is where the strongest evidence lies. And the strongest evidence really lies on heart disease, uh, diabetes, and in cancer. So that's where I'm going to focus our emphasis. And I'm just going to review these briefly. Um, and so what does the evidence show for us when it comes to cardiovascular disease or heart disease? The research on eating the Mediterranean way shows us that uh, this style of eating does decrease our triglyceride levels. And triglycerides are that free flowing fatty acid in our bloodstream. If you have a lipid panel done by your provider, uh, maybe you will see your cholesterol levels, maybe things like HDL and LDL, your triglyceride levels are on that lipid panel as well. And it can increase risk of heart disease when those are elevated. However, the research does show that the Mediterranean diet does decrease those levels in particular. The Mediterranean style diet also increases our HDL levels. HDL levels, you may have heard of as um, the good cholesterol, right? They are a hard one to budge. Uh, they're a hard one to increase, uh, but the Mediterranean style diet does show an increase in that good cholesterol level. A lot of the research supports that eating the Mediterranean way also reduces uh, the likelihood that we would have any sort of major cardiovascular event, such as a heart attack or stroke. And I think these percentages are quite astounding, really, right? So eating, again, in a long-term Mediterranean-style way, it supports the fact that uh, we can have less likelihood of experiencing a major cardiovascular event by 25 to 29%. One of the important features, in my opinion, that these studies um, show is that eating the Mediterranean style also improves our blood vessel function, right? Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the westernized diet as well and how that supports a lot of inflammation. And that is one of the primary you know, causes for cardiovascular disease. But this Mediterranean diet actually is a anti-inflammatory style diet. And with that style of eating that anti-inflammatory way, that helps improve the blood vessel function. I say that um, because that helps, you know, blood pump um, better. We're having less plaque buildup that increases the risk of a heart attack. But that improved blood vessel function is also important when it comes to the chronic disease of diabetes too, especially when it comes to the potential complications that diabetes can cause. The Mediterranean um, style diet, as far as the research shows in the context of diabetes, is favored over a traditional style like low fat diet that maybe you have, have, have heard been prescribed for diabetes management. So Mediterranean style is favored um, in blood sugar control over the standard low fat diet. It has also been shown to reduce the A1C levels by a 0.3 to 0.47%. Maybe that doesn't sound like a lot to you, but if especially somebody is just what you might call like borderline diabetes or maybe in the, um, in the category of pre-diabetes, a 0.3 or 0.47% reduction can actually be quite significant. 
And I'm going to backtrack a little bit and just define what an A1C is. Um, so for those that um, don't necessarily live with diabetes, A1C is the average of what your blood sugar levels are over generally about a three month um, cycle. So the average blood sugar over three months, it turns out to be in a percentage. And so the Mediterranean style can reduce that A1C by 0.3 to 0.47%. Again, maybe that doesn't seem significant. However, there is even some diabetes medications that lower um, blood sugars or A1Cs by you know, 0.5%. So you could really compare this style of eating in a reduction of A1C to a very particular style uh, diabetes medication being just as effective. Another important part that uh, the research shows is that eating a Mediterranean diet actually can increase uh, the probability of remission by 49%, remission of metabolic syndrome, uh, meaning elevated um, blood pressure, elevated blood sugars, um, um, and maybe an overweight status, right? So eating a Mediterranean style actually can increase the probability of remission, right? Um, taking it back by 49%. And uh, higher adherence to the Mediterranean style also has been shown to reduce the risk of de uh, diabetes development by 19 to 23%. So these are this was studied on people that do not currently have diabetes. But eating the Mediterranean style actually reduced the risk of diabetes by 19 to 23%. On average, that is where most of the studies showed. However, some studies showed even on a reduction higher than that, up to 23 to 59% reduced risk of developing diabetes for those that currently do not have uh, the condition of diabetes. So what does the research on cancer look like for Mediterranean diet? Uh, eating the Mediterranean way, the those that adhered to the highest levels of the Mediterranean diet showed that there was a lower risk of death from a cancer diagnosis, but also among those that were cancer survivors, it also showed that following this Mediterranean diet, uh, decrease the risk of death from any other cause too. So that could be uh, a cancer survivor um, with heart disease, right? Uh, eating that Mediterranean diet also decreased the risk of any cause of death among those cancer survivors. And then we also see that uh, those that have the highest adherence to Mediterranean diet also experience lower rates of several different types of cancers, including breast cancer, colorectal cancer, and prostate cancer, um, we might even be able to add a few more to that list like uh, liver cancer as well. But um, stay tuned because at the end of class today, we're going to talk about how we're going to have a cancer dietitian with us next week to learn more about uh, cancer prevention uh, way of eating. So stay tuned. And there's also a lot of uh, research going on right now on the Mediterranean style diet and uh, diseases like Alzheimer's disease or Parkinson's disease. We do see that people that eat the Mediterranean diet are at a decreased risk of developing these two conditions. However, this is one of those areas in which I was kind of stating like there is some research that demonstrates this decreased risk, but we can't necessarily say for certain at this time that it is the Mediterranean diet you know, that's causing that decreased risk. There is a lot of research that shows that maybe it's because of uh, the gut microbiome, the gut microbiota, 
and the gut bacteria that is playing um, a role on that decreased risk of these two conditions and that's varying gut microbiota specific to the Mediterranean style diet. So there is a lot of additional research that still needs to be done in order to ensure that, you know, um, eating the Mediterranean style diet is the one that's actually causing that decreased risk. So stay tuned. There is still lots of research. Again, I'm just touching on a few of these. There's lots of other research out there that is still continuing to be done. So next poll question you're gonna see pop up on your screen is how many years in a row has the Mediterranean diet been voted the best overall diet? How many years in a row has the Mediterranean diet been voted the best overall diet? You'll see that question pop up on your screen. Give it your best guess. And I'm here, I'm just trying to pull it up. There we go, okay, launch, we got it. Oops. Trying to give you guys the answer, sorry. Getting some guesses, yep, yep. We've got five, we got lots of tens, we got some sixes, so Five years, 10 years seems to be the 65% of said 10 years. And right. it's a toss up between five uh, and six. So let me end the, and I've got a few people voting in the chat saying some, some say 50, somebody says no clue. Uh, so we will end and share our results. Here's our results, Tina. And I will let you talk more about this. Thank you. All right. So the answer, the correct answer is that the uh, Mediterranean diet, and I'm using med diet for short, if you're seeing that on the screen, easier than typing out Mediterranean diet, has been voted the best overall diet for the last six years. So good job to those that voted six years. Um, best overall diet six years in a row. And so now we're going to start to talk about, you know, why that is. Um, we, we see in a lot of research that we've already reviewed. It's also been ranked number one um, for best plant-based diet. And again, I just wanted to note um, plant-based does not necessarily mean vegan, right? It's not necessarily mean vegetarian, but plant-based an emphasis on plants or plant forward is another way in which you might have heard it. It's also been uh, ranked number one for best diet for bone and joint health and ranked number one for best diet for healthy eating. Um, I, I hadn't heard that it had been ranked number one for any of those until um, putting together this presentation for you guys. I had just been to, um, you know, aware that it had been voted best overall diet. Um, but then it's also been ranked number two for best heart healthy diet and best diet for diabetes, which, you know, sense in kind of some of the research that we've already presented in today's class. So it definitely has some gold stars going for it as a style of eating. And one so, thing, one thing yeah. team, you've got somebody in the chat saying they did the heart study at more just many years ago where they followed this diet and it was fabulous in improving all of their blood tests. This yeah. person says wishing they had stayed on it. Ah, yes, great. Um, personal testimony from the group. Yes, thank you. Awesome. Um, and so hopefully uh, that person will be able to uh, maybe garner some new ideas to kickstart uh, that style of eating for yourself again. Thank you so much for sharing. So we talked about the research on the Mediterranean diet. We've talked about how it's been voted best overall diet, but what is the Mediterranean diet? So the Mediterranean diet, um, just very simply put, is a style of eating that is really based upon the foods that are abundantly available in the countries that border the Mediterranean Sea. Just very easy. This is the seven countries is where 
um, the Mediterranean diet started to, um, you know, be heard about quite frequently. Um, it caught a lot of attention because people in these countries were living lar uh, longer periods of time. Um, they had way less risk of heart disease. So it caught a lot of the people's attention. And that's really where a lot of the research started to come from. So yes, I did say that the Mediterranean diet is a style of eating, right? I'm using the word diet in the title Mediterranean diet, but it is not a diet in the traditional sense of the word when we focus on, you know, restriction or, a, you know, we usually think about diet as being something that we just follow for a short period of time. I've mentioned throughout this class already that eating the Mediterranean diet over a long period of time. The goal with the Mediterranean diet is that it be a, a lifelong style of eating, not anything that's just done for a short period of time. You know, we get short-term results and then we're off of it and eating. And however, again, this is really truly a style of eating in which we're focusing on including um certain types of food and not necessarily focusing on foods that need to be excluded like a traditional diet is. So let's reframe the way we're thinking about Mediterranean diet and looking at it as an overall eating pattern for our entire life. So what is included then if that's what we're focusing on? Um, what is included in the Mediterranean diet? Uh, first and foremost, a lot of plants, right? It was voted um, one of the best plant-based diets. And so when I use the word plants, I'm including all plants. And we'll talk more specifically about that. Why plants? Because plants are the ones that are rich in antioxidants that fight diseases uh, that are anti-inflammatory, as I've already mentioned that the uh, Mediterranean diet is, and also because the benefit of all the fiber from those plants too. There is a large emphasis on um, eating fish and poultry and using olive oil as our primary added fat. We're gonna break those down a little bit more specifically in a, in a second. Um, with less focus, right? Not exclusion, but less focus on eating red meat, um, added sugars and refined carbs. Uh, refined carbs, meaning uh, carbohydrates or specifically grains, right? Uh, white rice, you know, white bread, refined carbs are carbohydrate sources that are really stripped of a lot of nutrition. Um, and so we're going to talk about that too. So the next poll question uh, that you're going to see pop up on your screen is how much of your plate is made up of plants? So again, think of plants as being fruit. Uh, vegetable grains like quinoa or brown rice, uh, legumes like lentils, black beans, chickpeas. How much of your plate is made up of plants? Go ahead and answer that question in your in the poll. All right, votes are coming in, and I'm guessing this is asking people to think about their 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 plate on an everyday basis. I think that's how they're answering the question. Okay. Uh, so we've got. About 18% at hardly any. So far, it's going back and forth between a quarter and half. And 8% of the people are saying so far, most of their meal is plants. So let's take a couple more seconds. Um, okay, and let these answers up. A couple people in the chat, two thirds to three quarters. Somebody mentions with all of the news on lead and fish, makes you wanna steer away from fish. Maybe Tina can talk a little bit about that. I'm going to end the poll and share the results. It looks like everybody answered. And there's your results, Tina. All right. A quarter to a half is the majority. And let's go on with the answer. Thank you. All right. Very good. So first and foremost, um, when we're looking at the Mediterranean-style diet, um, the emphasis is plants, right? The, the goal for every meal is that plants be the very base of each of our meals. So we're going to have um, all of our meals be based on some sort of a, a fruit, vegetable, nuts, seeds, legumes, 
Um, again, we're talking about all fruits, all vegetables, all different types of nuts, although in the Mediterranean diet, there definitely is an emphasis more along the lines of like almonds and hazelnuts, but all nuts still fit in this diet. Uh, seeds like pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, chia seeds, and then legumes, as I was mentioning earlier, lentils, black beans, chickpeas. Um, we're trying to, to make all of our meals based upon these plant items. Um, all of these are great sources of fiber, um, which we know are very beneficial in decreasing our risk of heart disease by decreasing cholesterol numbers, decreasing those triglyceride levels that we talked about. Um, they're also um, a little bit harder to, to digest, these fiber sources are, so they digest slower, they keep us fuller for longer, and especially when we're looking at um, blood sugar control for people living with diabetes, um, these are carbohydrate foods, right? Uh, fruits, starchy vegetables, uh, beans like chickpeas and lentils that I was mentioning, these are carbohydrate foods but they're excellent sources of fiber, which makes them blood sugar friendly because they do digest slower and therefore raise the blood sugar um, slower as well, which is again, just some of the main points, part of these foods and why we see the research that we do um, being very um, heart friendly as far as reducing cholesterol levels, and um, reducing A1C levels in diabetes. It's a lot up to do with the fiber sources in these foods. Um, we also know that when we're eating more plants, we're getting a lot more um, vitamins and minerals too, right? We've heard the recommendation um, you know, within our country to, to eat the rainbow, right? We want to see lots of different colors on our plates and by the inclusion of lots of different fruits and vegetables, we usually can represent many more of those colors on our plate. So this, I'm bringing this Mediterranean diet um, into some of the things that I think we traditionally hear in our country too. All right, so fish and seafood. Um, fish and seafood, as far as a recommendation from the Mediterranean diet is to eat often, at least two times per week. Um, again, most of the meals really want to be based around plants, um, but there's still room for animal proteins too. So the recommendation for fish and seafood is yes to eat them often, at least two times per week. Um, in the Mediterranean diet, the focus is really choosing fish that have a lot of those omega-3 fatty acids. So albacortuna, salmon, um, flounder, cod are really great sources of these omega-3 fatty acids along with herring and sardines. Obviously, I realize that fish can be a challenge for some people at times, um, you know, love it or hate it. Um, and so if you haven't um, tried any fish lately or if it is just harder to get fish into your diet, um, you know, experiment in trying to find maybe a different recipe. Um, one of the recommendations when trying to increase fish into your diet is, is choosing fish when you are at a restaurant, because when you're at the restaurant, right, you've got professionals cooking it, maybe a little bit better at cooking it than ourselves. Fish can be a, a challenging protein to cook. So um, ordering it when you're at the restaurant um, and learning a little bit more about how um, the restaurant prepares it and season it. And maybe you'll find something that you like in that way. And then shrimp uh, being an option for seafood is often included in the Mediterranean diet as well. Poultry, eggs, cheese, and yogurt are also included in the Mediterranean style diet. And the recommendation here is moderate portions daily to weekly, right? I think you're starting to realize that the Mediterranean diet, again, as I mentioned, a style of eating, there are not very strict, um, you know, rules around the style of eating, right? You're not saying, you know, eat this certain number grams of carb or this certain number grams of protein. It's a style of eating and a, and a way to choose foods and how frequently to choose those foods. 
So poultry, eggs, cheese, and yogurt, it is recommended that um, you can use those in moderate portions on a daily to weekly basis. And so by poultry, we're talking about skinless uh, chicken and turkey. Um, eggs can be included. Um, I think you'll see oftentimes, you know, on Mediterranean style, like salads, you know, if they're doing hard boiled eggs, they'll do the egg whites over the egg yolk. If you see a lot of Mediterranean recipes that are desserts, um, you will see that they use a lot of egg whites in the um, recipe. Again, um, you can use the whole egg. A recommendation still is just an egg a day is an acceptable option. The yogurts that are used in the Mediterranean style are your higher protein yogurts, like a, a plain Greek yogurt. Um, I'm saying plain as in not, not sweetened or not flavored in any way, plain Greek yogurt, and then being able to sweeten it to your own um, you know, likeness, maybe with the use of fruit, as you see in the picture, or a drizzle of honey for sweetness rather than the added sugars and some of the common yogurt brands that we find in our grocery stores. The cheeses used often in the Mediterranean style uh, or Mediterranean diet are ricotta cheese, feta cheese, and goat cheese. Um, the cheeses that I think we probably most often use here in the United States, things like um, you know, cheddar, mozzarella, those are all good options still and can be included as part of the Mediterranean style diet. The focus there then would be to choose the lighter versions, meaning, um, you know, cheddar cheese made with 2% um, fat or 2% milk fat, um, but you can also do the lighter versions like on feta too. Those are options that are available. Tina, I've got quite a few, a little bit of Quite a few questions going on in the chat. Um, so I and I want to make sure we address these. So I'm going to try to chunk them into two or three questions. So one of the, the questions is um, on your previous slide, you talked about fish. So somebody asked a question about with all the news on this person says lead in fish. And I know there's other uh, ca uh, chemicals and metals like mercury. Um, She's mentioning makes you want to steer away from fish. I don't know if you can speak to that at all. And then somebody else asked about the tilapia. Well, first question is about fish, best choices. Um, maybe you can tackle that one first. So um, it was brought up lead in fish. Um, I know, I, I think I probably am more able to speak on maybe mercury content in fish over lead in fish at this point. It sounds like a good topic for a future class, to be honest. Um, so when we are, um, you know, choosing a lot of fish, you know, when we're looking at salmon, um, tuna, um, cod, those don't tend to be fish that we see a lot of lead or mercury in. Uh, Chris, correct me if I'm wrong or if you have anything else to, to add to that. Um, it's my understanding that we see more mercury or those um, metals in um, more like exotic fish, you know, like um, swordfish and those sorts of fish. I have heard that too. And I do know that the bigger the fish is, <clears throat> the more likely as well because they have more fat, right? And the fat is great. It's part of the Mediterranean diet, but it also can store some of those um, toxic metals. Yeah. Um, and then about the tilapia, uh, I don't know. I know I have heard some things about tilapia too, but I will get some um, links and put them in the chat about how to choose the best. Then, uh, so thank you for those questions. I'll put some links in the chat. Um, Tina, a couple other questions were just related to, um, as somebody made some suggestions about how they cook their fish, that's great, um, was related to feta cheese having a lot of salt. And then you had mentioned something about granola and somebody mentioned all the sugar in granola and is that good or bad? So two questions there and then we can move on. So feta cheese has tons of salt was the comment. And then what about all the sugar in granola? 
So, um, and I, I just want to add to um, the tilapia conversation too. Um, tilapia can be a really great choice for those that maybe don't really love fish and the fishy flavor. Um, tilapia is very mild, and so it can be really a good uh, beginner fish um, for somebody that's trying to include a little bit more fish. Not that it is very high in omega-3 fatty acids like salmon or tuna, but it is still a very good lean protein source. I do understand some of the controversy around tilapia as far as farm raising. Um, and so you can be selective on the packaging to um, choose um, you know, fresh caught um, fish. Um, granola, so maybe we're looking at the picture that's in front of us right now. Granola can be a high sugar source. Um, I think we have to be very selective about um, you know, what types of sugars are used in granola. So we can find granola that has um, the binding agent um, of like a, a honey or a maple syrup, maybe even finding recipes for yourself and making your own granola so you feel comfortable with that as well. I'm trying to remember it was granola and oh, and feta cheese and sodium. Um, yes, and again, we're, um, I don't know the serving size, I'm, I'm guessing about an ounce. I don't know the sodium content off the top of my head for feta, but cheese does tend to have a lot of sodium, um, not exclusive to feta. Again, we're using very moderate portions. We're not talking about eating it often. Um, and I think one of the recommendations that I was reading is, is three to four ounces of cheese per week, right? So that is a very small amount. So I'm not overly concerned about the sodium in that recommendation of moderate portions daily to weekly. Thank you for the question. So speaking of cheeses, um, I kind of want to hear from you guys, you know, uh, ricotta, feta, and goat cheese aren't necessarily cheeses I think that we use very often, but if you do eat them, you know, share some of the ideas on how you use them in, in some of your meals and snacks. I'll give you an opportunity to put that in the chat or unmute yourself and, and speak about how you might use ricotta, feta, or goat cheese. Awesome. And you can put those answers either in the chat, I will watch for that, or you can put them, um, you can unmute if you would like to. So we're getting some answers in the chat. Um, let me get, make it bigger so I can see it. Somebody said they use feta on their salads and some of their Greek dishes. And one thing about the sodium I wanted to add, yes, it is high in sodium, but because it is much stronger in flavor, you tend to use a lot less than if you were like melting cheddar cheese over something or colby cheese. A little bit goes a long way, but yes, it is salty. Uh, somebody says not crazy about the flavor of any of these cheeses. Um, yeah, feta and goat are stronger flavor. Ricotta, not strong, but it's definitely one you like or don't. Um, ditto on the feta use. Somebody said, I have a navy bean artichoke casserole with goat cheese. The recipe mm. is online and it is wonderful. Thank you. Put that link in the chat when you have time. We would love yeah, to see yeah. it. Somebody said feta on chickpea bowls. Somebody says a little goat cheese on a slice of wheat bread with a little fig spread. That sounds delicious. Okay. Feta in salad, go mm -hmm. with appetizers. So lots of really good ideas. Yes, um, some of those recipes sounded delicious. So would definitely love to see those in the chat. All right, thank you guys. Um, and again, for those that don't necessarily love these sorts of cheeses, that's okay. We can still use the cheese that maybe we're more traditionally accustomed to, but purchasing them um, using 2% milk fat instead of the full fat version. Um, I think one of, and I said we're not focusing on excluding certain types of foods, but using, um, for lack of a better word, maybe like whole cheese over uh, more pasteurized st styles of cheeses like um, American cheese. Um, you know, th that would be not necessarily recommended on a Mediterranean style diet. And Tina, I think you mean processed, not okay. pasteurized. Thank you. Okay. So okay. Yes. Good. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. All right. And so another big component of the Mediterranean style diet is olive oil. Um, olive oil 
is the primary source of added fats in the Mediterranean style of eating. And what do I mean by primary source of added fats? I think when we look at our westernized style of eating, we add extra fats in the form of butter, you know, margarine, um, you know, Miracle Whip or mayonnaise, um, vegetable oils, canola oils. Those are, I think, we tend to kind of lean towards as far as our primary sources of added fat. They don't use a lot of those in the Mediterranean style diet. And so olive oil is their primary source of added fat. Um, when choosing olive oil, um, most often in the Mediterranean style diet, they're choosing extra virgin olive oil um, that is cold pressed. Um, those oils tend to have the richest amount of this, this um, chemical called polyphenols, which is the component of the olive oil that we see has the most impact as far as an antioxidant, again, fighting against certain um, diseases like cancer, and the component of the olive oil that um, is promoting that anti-inflammatory effect. So better blood vessel um, function, like I was mentioning earlier. Again, we're not focusing on the exclusion, right? There is still room for some red meat, um, but the recommendation is to simply eat it less often. So general recommendation for eating something like a red meat would just be once a week, right? So we've got fish two to three times per week. Um, we've got poultry about one to two times per week. There's room for a red meat once per week. And then the other days and other meals truly want to be plant-based. Um, and so by red meat, we're talking about beef. Um, in the Mediterranean style diet, pork is also included as a red meat. Um, and so processed meats would also include, you know, things like bacon and hot dogs and sausage. We simply just want to eat those less often. We do not see those very frequently at all in the Mediterranean diet. Dina, real quick, and I know we're about 945, but I want to honor these really great questions in the chat. Um, you were talking about fats and someone wants to know about coconut oil, mm. good or bad. Yeah, thank you for that question. Mm -hmm. um, and so when we are looking at the different types of oils um, being unsaturated fat, which I haven't used that term yet, but those are our heart healthy fats um, like olive oil. Um, coconut oil actually is a higher percentage of saturated fats, even more so than butter. And so um, coconut oil is not something that traditionally used as part of the Mediterranean diet. And the American Heart Association um, also does not recommend the use of coconut oil at this time because of its high saturated fat intake content, I guess I should say, and the fact that saturated fat is linked to the increased risk of heart disease. Thanks for asking that question. Um, on the Mediterranean style diet, when we are looking at um, the use of desserts, right? Because who doesn't like a little dessert at the end of a day or a meal? Um, the goal is again, to eat less often, just like the recommendation for red meat. Now we use the word dessert in talking about some of those more um, refined um, dessert options like uh, cake, um, pies, you know, donuts, cupcake. Uh, maybe you might throw ice cream into that conversation too. The Mediterranean diet focuses on the use of fresh fruit as the primary dessert um, choice. Um, if you're looking at some of the resources that I'll share at the end of class, you will also see that there are some baked goods in the Mediterranean style diet for desserts, um, but you will see that um, the sugar sources generally tend to come from fruit. Um, the, the fat is from olive oil, which is different than our desserts where we're usually using a butter. I mentioned there would be more use of egg whites over the whole egg. So some different um, variations as far as baked goods as being an option for dessert too. And so that's kind of the overall view of what the Mediterranean diet looks like. 
Um, old Ways is one of the resources that I would recommend to you guys to take a look at. You can see the, um, the link at the bottom of that pyramid. Uh, they, they do a Mediterranean diet pyramid just to kind of understand the big picture of the Mediterranean style of eating and the ways that I have addressed those different types of food groups. Please realize that you can see that that biggest section there, yes, plants, but underneath that, we see that the Mediterranean diet is just not the food choices, but the style of living too. So there's, um, you know, this way of eating in conjunction with being more physically active, um, socializing and, and sharing meals with other people, stress management. And these recommendations also come along with the recommendation um, that you wouldn't be smoking as well. I didn't touch on beverages. I do realize that primary beverage of choice is water. And there is a little bit of wine used in moderation as part of the Mediterranean diet. I didn't hit on that because we also do have some research to show that increased alcohol intake can um, promote certain disease states too. So um, I think for the sake of time, I'm going to skip this question. Um, just so we can move on and talk about how we can actually use some of these principles in our actual meals and snacks. So we talked about the big picture of what a Mediterranean diet looks like. How does that compare to our traditional style of diet, which um, maybe you've heard uh, referred to as the Western diet or a westernized style of eating, which includes a lot of you know, carbohydrates that are just very low in fiber, as I was mentioning earlier, you know, white breads and um, commercially prepared baked goods like cakes and cookies and crackers and pretzels, um, a lot of red meat, a lot of processed meat like the, the bacon and the hot dogs, fried foods, added sugars coming from our sweet um, drinks, but our, our um, desserts too. We see this style of eating um, has been shown in our research to definitely increase the risk of chronic diseases because this style of eating promotes inflammation, which is not the direction that we want to go. And so that's how Mediterranean diet looks different than a westernized style of eating. I just wanted to give you guys some practical tips, some take home tips, right? Um, so this is just a comparison, you know, Western diet, um, traditional sort of breakfast item might look like eggs, bacon, toast, and butter, right? Classic, we can find that on any corner breakfast um, restaurant. What would the Mediterranean style diet look like? Um, that Mediterranean style diet would still use eggs. Uh, maybe it would be the inclusion of a little of that feta cheese with some spinach or tomato or whatever type of a vegetable that you wanted to add to that. Um, a piece of whole grain toast with some smashed up avocado on top that gets you your protein. It gets you some of that Mediterranean style cheese, vegetables, whole grains, and even more heart healthy fats with the avocado. Again, how can we compare? A uh, Western style diet might look something like um, a sugar sweetened cereal with some milk as a quick choice, a quick breakfast. A Mediterranean breakfast might look like using. Um, some old fashioned oats, um, preparing those with water, adding some dried cranberries, or, or maybe you'd wanna put some fresh strawberries or blueberries on there, a sprinkle of some chia seeds or flax seeds, maybe some slivered almonds or other sort of nut, and then um, a splash of milk if you feel like you just need to loosen up that consistency a little bit. Some lunch options. Um, so a traditional westernized lunch might be, you know, driving through the fast food lane, getting yourself a burger and french fries. Um, Mediterranean style lunch might look something like, again, plant-based, right? So maybe we've got some brown rice or some quinoa. We add some beans, like some black beans, um, some kidney beans. Maybe we do add a little bit of grilled chicken because there is room for um, poultry, you know, one, two times per week throwing in whatever sorts of vegetables that you would like. And again, we got a little guacamole as a, a sort of um, a sauce or dressing over the top of that lunch option. Um, a Westernized style uh, lunch option might be a tuna fish sandwich, right? White bread, um, some potato chips, a fruit cup. Um, what could the Mediterranean way look like? 
Um, and so I've linked a recipe here from the Mediterranean dish on a tuna and potato salad. And you're seeing a picture of it right there on your screen. Um, it's got tomatoes, it's got some onions, it's got tuna as a, a complementary protein, right? But the base of the meal still tends to be very plant heavy with the use of potatoes and green beans, and then maybe strawberries on the side. I'm gonna skip that question as well for the sake of time. And then for dinner, um, you know, let's look at a westernized style common dinner, right? We've got steak, we've got baked potato that's loaded with butter and sour cream, and then we've got a salad on the side. Nothing wrong with that necessarily, right? We can still have a red meat uh, once per week per the recommendation from the Mediterranean style diet. Um, but how can we make some tweaks to that? Well, a Mediterranean way might look like having yourself that piece of fish, right? Two to three times per week is the recommendation of a, a fatty fish like salmon. You're seeing a picture here from eatingwell.com, which is a, a kale, quinoa, and apple salad. Um, it is combining your, your starch, your quinoa, your whole grain with fruits and vegetables, right? Kale and apple. So it's a combination dish meeting lots of different needs. Olive oil is your dressing on that quinoa salad. Again, it doesn't have to be that quinoa salad. You could pick from a variety of different salads. Hey, one thing, Tina. Um, I, uh, people are asking for all of these links. Um, I've got them at the end. Put, uh, yes, but they can't click on them. Yep. So they're gonna be on the summary sheet, correct? Yep, they're going to be on our summary sheet too. Yep. Okay, so she'll talk about that, where you find the summary sheets. Um, yep. So thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and I think this is the last dinner option that I'll go over, um, right? Friday night, tired from the work week, ordering a pepperoni pizza on a two liter of soda. Uh, what could the Mediterranean way look like? Um, and this is a recipe from the Mediterranean dish.com in which um, a flatbread is a flatbread pizza is made. It's got some uh, Kalamata olives, some feta cheese, and then you can see a host of different vegetables on there. Um, might be basil, it could be arugula, it could be tomato. You've got artichokes, um, some onions on there. Again, very plant-based um, dinner option. Snack options. Um, maybe we're using roasted chickpeas in which you can buy from the store. You can find some recipes to make your own at home. Uh, very high in fiber, good source of plant protein, which would be a more Mediterranean snack than, you know, the traditional potato chip that we might let be uh, more likely to pick up. Um, the Mediterranean style snack of maybe some nuts. Um, with some dried fruit, like maybe some dried mango or dried cranberries and a little bit of uh, feta, feta cheese, um, which would be a, a better, more Mediterranean style um, snack than something that we might grab like some deli meat and uh, string cheese and roll it up and eat it as a snack. Um, and then veggies and rather than veggies and ranch, right? Hummus is a, a bean-based dip made from uh, garbanzo beans or chickpeas. It also uses an, it uses an ingredient called tahini, which is very commonly found in the Mediterranean diet as well, a good source of olive oil, um, plant protein, and fibers, which um, would be more uh, nutrient-rich than the use of ranch dressing as a dip for vegetable. All right, so if you, um, you know, can take a picture of the screen, please feel free to do so, but these links will be on our summary sheet that I'll talk about in a second. Uh, the recipes that I promoted today are from the Mediterranean Dish um, website. She's also on social media. She does a lot of videos um, promoting recipes that she creates. Old Ways is a great uh, resource as well to learn more about the Mediterranean diet. And if you um, enjoy Facebook groups, um, they do have a private group called Old Ways Make Everyday Mediterranean, in which you can learn from other people on how to eat Mediterranean style too. And then cancer.org, hopkinsmedicine.org, and Mayo Clinic all have great resources on eating Mediterranean as well. So, um, please feel free. I know that was a lot of information. I think we could have done probably uh, a two hour class for this topic. Um, but 
you know, uh, feel free to share, maybe just uh, type it in the chat um, if you wish. Uh, what is one thing that you learned today that you plan to use in the upcoming week? I will let you guys go ahead and do that. Enter that information into the chat while I kind of review some other things here too. Um, so on this, oops, on this screen here, what you're seeing are our upcoming classes. Um, and so I mentioned earlier about how Mediterranean diet can be very beneficial for cancer reduction uh, risk. However, we will have the cancer care dietitian Jillian with us next week, and she is going to be discussing um, how to eat for cancer prevention. And she's also going to be a, a doing a cooking class with Chris, who is our co-host, doing the poll questions for us on June 28th. So um, take a look at those. We've also got some other fun um, classes coming up too on sun safety and, and summer cooking. So um, please register for those. You can find those classes on our Bronson Eats page of bronsonhealth.com. You can find all of our upcoming classes and register for other classes. But if you have attended one of our previous classes in this class included, we always do a one page summary sheet of the class and you can find it on this website. Um, you, you, we usually post them about one to two weeks after the class is, is finished. And then on that Bronson Eats website, you will also find our YouTube channel. It will link you to the, the Bronson YouTube channel in which all of our classes are recorded. And so you can watch any of our previous recordings or watch this class again. And then on the Bronson Eats website, we also have like plant-based cookbooks that you can download and different recipes to take a look at too. Um, this is the link to our YouTube channel directly, or you can just simply search Bronson Healthcare, look under the playlist for virtual wellness classes. And again, I'll put all of this information on our um, class summary. So thank you guys so much. I know that I've hit right up to 10 o'clock, but I'm showing you guys the screen again. Here, um, Chris is going to uh, put a survey link into the chat box. So if and you guys- And Tina, uh, sorry to interrupt you. I did that and one of the persons on the meeting told me that the link does not work. So I'm mm -hmm. checking on that right now. If not though, you will get, you'll get a follow-up after this class with that link after asking you to fill it out. You'll get that later today. Yeah, but if you hang on just a couple minutes, I'm going to go back and double check that link um, and see if I can get it working. Thank you. So, yeah, so please uh, take a minute here um, if you need to take a picture of this um, last slide, if you need any of these resources. Chris is checking on that survey link, but as she mentioned, it will be in the follow up email that you will receive. Um, thank you guys so much for being here. I do appreciate it. Um, we want to hear, we got a, a big group of people today, probably some new faces. Maybe this is your first time coming to this class. Um, and so if you guys have any ideas for us in future classes, please feel free to share either on the survey link if that is available, or you are more than welcome to just add them to the chat or unmute yourself. I'm gonna go ahead and stop recording if you have anything that you would like to unmute yourself and talk about.